Hey everybody, it's John Riley, Director of Mountain Bike Product Development at Trek, and I'm here today to talk to you about the all-new Top Fuel. But before I dig into the new bike, I want to talk a little bit about the history of this bike. We first introduced a Top Fuel in 2004, and that was our newest full suspension cross-country race bike. Since then, we've evolved it, we've made it lighter, we've updated the geometry and done other things to make it appropriate for racing. Then in 2019, the top fuel significantly changed and we began to bridge the gap between a pure race bike and trail bike. And now for 2022, the top fuel moves further to the trail category. So let's take a look at this all new top fuel. All right, let's get into some of the details of the 2022 top fuel. And to do the details, I wanna bring in the person that designed this bike from an engineering standpoint. It's lead engineer, Alex Martin. Alex has been working for Trek a long period of time and brings a lot of expertise into this category um, because he not only is an awesome engineer, but he also is a user in this style of bike. So Alex, welcome. Thanks. Good to see you here. All right, Alex, let's jump into the bike a bit and talk a little bit about who it's for because really that's the big question because right now, you know, if you look at the media, look at other social outlets, you know, this bike's been called anything from down country to XC Trail. I mean, who is this bike for? Yeah, I would say this bike is for the rider that enjoys pedaling up as much as they enjoy going down. Um, definitely valuing pedaling efficiency um, while able to descend like a normal trail bike and not right. be limited, you know, on the descents, maybe like a traditional XC bike. Right, because I think what we're finding is as this category is evolving and, you know, some um, areas call it down country, some XC trail, um, the idea there is that pedaling efficiency, right, is Absolutely. super important. But if you can keep the pedaling efficiency, but make it way more capable, that's an awesome package, right? That's, totally. that's, the, that's the goal, right, yep. of the and bike itself. Yeah, definitely a balance that, you know, from an engineering standpoint, we're trying to, to maintain because sometimes they can, you know, work against each other. And when you look at this bike, it's still 120 travel though, really. I mean, it, was, it came up five millimeters in the rear, 120 on the front, so it's matching now, really well balanced. Um, but if you're looking at travel on this bike, you're really missing the point, right? Yeah, it definitely rides like it has more than 120 millimeters of travel. Um, you know, a lot of the testing that we did, we were riding it on trails that, you know, we've tested slash on, um, and tested some of our bigger bikes. Um, Cause we want, it's a bike that we want to be able to be ridden pretty much everywhere. Right. And you know, what have you done from an engineering standpoint, you know, as we were developing this bike to make that bike such a good pedaling bike? We've done a bunch. Um, it's kind of a culmination of a lot of little things that we did with kinematics and Geometry. Um, one thing we could point at is uh, the anti squat curve on this bike. So, where we put the main pivot, and we have a, a pretty flat anti squat curve. And so, what that does is uh, in that pedaling range, um, it provides support throughout the range. So, you're not having a bunch of shock movement as you're applying power to the bike. So, that's a, it makes it quite efficient, um, flat going uphill. Um, another thing is we steepen the seat tube angle by about a degree and a half, keeping the rider over the pedals. Yep, moving them. Yep, moving them a little bit more forward. Uh, and then to preserve that seated position, we grew the reach by 10 millimeters, which also helps with stability going down. Um, and then slacken the head tube angle by about a degree and a half to um, give it a little bit more capability on the descent. Right, and that, you know, that degree and a half, that's pretty significant for a bike in this category. Definitely. That's a lot of capability to the bike. And, and the rear end on the bike, we kept it the same, right? Because we, we felt really good about the balance for that, Yeah, right? we found that that 435 millimeter chain stay is pretty great for this application. You know, something else with this bike that we kind of struggled with as a decision point was storage. Yep. So as a trail rider, and I put myself as a trail rider, I really appreciate that. It just that basically you can grab the bike and go and know you have your emergency kit with you or you could have snacks or you know a jacket whatever um, there was a balance there because there's weight added to do that but yes um, the feature itself we think is really important as a category and we feel that it's so important we even did it as far as aluminum bikes too right yeah definitely and you know one nice thing you know especially for a bike like top fuel where you know that rider's likely doing a longer ride, getting that weight off of your body and into the bike is a, you know, a more balanced package. And so yeah, introducing it to aluminum was definitely a challenge. Um, you know, with carbon, we're able to locally reinforce areas on the frame where we have that hole, but on aluminum, you know, we have different manufacturing constraints. So it took a lot of analysis time with our uh, structural analysis team, working with our supplier to be able to, you know, keep the bike lightweight and still structurally sound with, with the hole in the down tube in aluminum. 
Yeah, I got to say from my seat, you know, in the product end, that's the one thing I'm super proud of is we're bringing a really cool feature all the way down the price points. We did it, introduced it with the Slash. We've included it in all of our bikes that are in the trail category going forward. And it's something that you can get all the way from the entry level bike to the top end bike. And I don't think anybody wouldn't think it's a cool feature, you yeah, know, on agreed. the bike itself. All right, let's talk about wheel and tire size. What are we doing on this bike? Yeah, so top fuel is uh, 29er from small through double extra large and then 27.5 on the extra small. Uh, it's going to come with 2.4s, but it can clear up to a 2.5. Right on. So we are doing a really full size range on this bike, which Absolutely. I think is awesome because we can fit probably the widest range we've ever been able to fit on this new top fuel uh, by having that extra small and the extra extra large. Definitely. All right, let's talk about knock block 2.0. So the previous bike had the standard knock block. We moved to knock block 2.0 on, on this bike. What is knock block 2.0? Yeah, so knock block 2.0, um, first off, we increased the steering range. So we went from 58 degrees to 72 degrees. And then secondly, we now have down tube clearance for the fork controls. So if a rider wants to remove knock block, they do have that option. Um, one thing that we really like about knock block on this platform is it offers top tube protection. So on some of the XC and lighter trail bikes like Top Fuel and Super Caliber and Pro Caliber, um, with lower hand positions, you can protect the top tube from a brake lever in the uh, event of a crash. Right, and you know, unfortunately that's part of mountain biking, right? Definitely. You might have a little get off on the bike. It's nice to know that your frame's protected. You don't have to worry about taking a little get off on your bike. Yep, but if you want to remove it, um, you can remove knock block and the fork will still clear the down tube. All right, let's talk about one of the tuning features that we've had on our bikes forever, and that's the Minnow Link. Yep. So the Minnow Link is on this bike again, right? But we've changed it from the previous version, right? Yeah, so we moved it from the upper shock mount to the lower shock mount. A lot of that was driven by um, going to a trunnion mount shock. So we needed a bearing in the upper shock mount. Uh, we decided to keep it around the shock for a really easy swap over. Just a single bolt, pull the bolt, flip the chips, put the bolt back in, and you're ready to go. And what's that do for the bike? If yeah, you... so going from minnow low to minnow high is going to steepen the seat tube angle and the head tube angle by about half a degree and raise the bottom bracket by around seven millimeters. Which is really cool on this bike because remember, this is bridging kind of the, you know, racy XC trail, trail end, and somebody might want a little quicker handling version of the bike because they like some of the characteristics of the other bike or they might want to keep it fully slack because they appreciate the trail aspect. Absolutely, and if you know, depending which region you live in and what your local trails are like, you know, if you want to set it suited more for maybe flat, um, tighter, twistier trails, or if you live in, you know, more mountainous terrain and have a lot more descending, can run it in low. All right, Alex, let's talk about some of the things that we've done on this new bike to make maintenance and durability better. Yeah, definitely, those are some high priority items for this bike. So first off, we have internal guided routing. So we have fully guided, housing from the entrance at the head tube all the way down to the seat tube, and that's for dropper, shift housing, and brake hose. So that makes maintenance uh, much easier than some previous bikes. Right on. And then secondly, we made a change to a threaded bottom bracket. So we're doing the BSA 73 threaded BB on carbon and aluminum. Yeah, those are great maintenance and durability things that you know this category has been asking for. So yep. good job on that. All right, Alex, so another thing that you've done with the frame is you've gone up to 34.9 standard on the dropper. Uh, why is that important? Yeah, so lately droppers have been getting longer travel um, and to maintain really smooth actuation um, and you know, a, a relatively movement-free or stiff extended position, going to that larger diameter um, has really helped us. And it's really about that more than the frame, but is there some benefits to the frame? Yeah, we see um, slight stiffness improvement Right, because that's why I think the one thing we always talk about the dropper, but there is some benefit to the frame. So it's a nice thing to have on a bike like this for sure. All right, Alex, we talked about the travel on the bike. It's a 120 front and rear now, um, but we did make some capability in the bike to allow for a longer travel fork, correct? Of course, yeah. So the bike is validated to a 130 millimeter fork if you feel like you need a little bit more suspension up front or want a higher uh, ride height. And it also does what then to the geometry? So that going to a 134 fork will slacken the head tube and seat tube angle by about a half a degree and raise your bottom bracket by around three millimeters. So even more trail. All right, now we're going to change gears a little bit and talk to someone from the rider's perspective on the new Top Fuel for 2022. And we're going to talk to Payson McKelvin, who is one of our racers, but also has been one of our test riders from as long back as 2015. 
he has been riding both the top fuel and the super caliber and giving us a lot of key feedback that's helped us dial these bikes in to have them work really good. So Payson, it's awesome to have you here. But what I really want from you is like, what is it about this new bike that you like the most? Yeah, well, like you said, um, I've been around to see at least a few iterations of Top Fuel. Um, and on paper, when you see some of the, the numbers, a lot of people's eye, you know, immediately goes to travel, right? And when you just look at travel and you compare this new Top Fuel um, to the previous one, it may not seem like uh, the, the largest advancement. But of all the years that I've been riding Top Fuel, this for me was actually the biggest leap um, in performance and, and biggest changes in, in ride characteristics. Um, and that's despite the fact that, you know, the travel only changed modestly, but there's a whole bunch of other areas where this bike just really, really progressed. Um, and, you know, it, it's funny when I first uh, pulled it out of the box, it, it the sort of and built it, its stance just kind of looked different, if, if that makes sense. Like just the, you know, when you, you pull up to a parking lot and, and you see a Lamborghini or something in the parking lot, you just know that the stance of that car means something. And I kind of had that uh, had that feeling um, with this new Top Fuel, but I, I hadn't put it through its paces yet, so I couldn't really put my finger on it yet. But um, the the added capability is just really mind-boggling. That's the thing that, that truly blew me away. Um, and the fact that there was zero sacrifice in pedaling efficiency. I can tell no difference um, between the previous top fuel and this current top fuel in terms of charging uphill. Um, but when you're riding it aggressively on trail, um, the ability to just uh, push your limits and, and ride technical terrain, steep terrain, um, was just really, really mind blowing. And, and this bike actually now fits kind of in a different category for me, believe it or not. How does this new top fuel fit into your Quivera bikes now? Yeah, absolutely. I, the way I kind of like to think about it is the the Super Caliber is sort of my work bike, um, and this new top fuel is is kind of my play bike. And just a real world example of that, I'm I'm sort of struggling with that this week in a way, in a funny way, because I'm getting ready for uh, a new fastest known time effort, and I need to be spending time um, on on my work bike. Uh, but I rode. Uh, this new top fuel a few days ago and had so, so much fun um, that I think tomorrow I'm actually going to go take it out and just take it for a long ride in the mountains um, and, and push it in, in our high country riding just because I, I, I can't turn my back on it. It's so fun and it's a new riding experience for me. Um, and the, the play bike, I think, is going to get the nod tomorrow, even though, you know, I should maybe be spending time on my work bike tomorrow. <laughs> All right, again, good stuff, Payson, but I think you actually also have a pretty unique story about this bike while you were out test riding, don't you? Yeah, so I was out um, shooting some photos and, and uh, I had a couple buddies roll up and, and they said, oh, you're on the trail, trail bike today on an EX. And, you know, I couldn't really talk about it yet, so I was like, eh, you know, just sort of hummed and hot a little bit, but it, it's, it was, uh, sort of validation that the experience I had had that the the stance of this bike the the uh, just the vibe it gives off even though you know the fork is still 120 even though that rear suspension only went up five mils it it has a different attitude um, and you can really visually it has a different attitude and you can really feel that when you're riding as well but I mean like I said you know tomorrow when I go out I'm gonna ride at least four hours because that's what's on the training plan um, and it it does so well pedaling in these high mountains of Colorado where I ride. It's going to be a superb training ride. Um, my coach won't know the difference, but I'm going to have way more fun uh, on the downhills because of it. All right, Payson, thank you very much. It's always awesome hearing from your perspective from a rider about the new Top Fuel. And um, switching back now to the studio, I'm here with Alex Martin, the head engineer for this project. And we just want to come back and talk about who this bike is for. Alex, who's this bike for? The new Top Fuel is for the rider that enjoys going up just as much as they enjoy going down. Um, definitely prioritizing pedaling efficiency, but also having a blast on the way back down. Right on, and you know, you've seen it in the media, you've heard about it, you know, there's down country, XC trail, whatever you want to call it. It's a great, awesome bike. It's light, it's super efficient, it's super capable. 
all available with lots of features focused on having a great experience out on the trail. That's the new 2022 Top Fuel. All right, let's talk a little bit about the lineup of Top Fuel for 2022. We start with the alloy models. We have three models, the five, the seven, and the eight. And then when we move into carbon, we have three models as well, the 97, 98, and 99. And you can't forget about one thing that Trek brings that no one else has, and that's Project One. In Project One, you can make the craziest looking bike. The bike of your dreams is available only through the Trek Project One. All right, now it's come to that time in the show when we have to throw up our disclaimer about the embargo. That's right, once again, we've got to ask that you keep all this information to yourselves until the date on the screen. And you know why, it helps you build a story, lets us get the information to you early, but honors the date that we need to have for our dealers and our other vendors. If you have questions, we're always up for answering your questions. There's an email on the screen right now, shoot them over, we'll get back to you. Any details that we can help with, we're glad to do that. And finally, the media kit. We put together an awesome media kit. A lot of work goes into it, so I think a lot of your questions will be answered by that. So that's it on the Top Fuel. Hope you enjoyed the presentation. Have a great day.